Welcome to day one of the 30 day My Defer Sock Analyst Challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring sock analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. I hope that you're as excited as I am to get started. But before I jump right in, if this is your first time seeing my videos, hello, my name is Steven and I've been in the cybersecurity industry for about eight years now, focusing specifically in the security operations domain. And I am now a digital forensics and incident response consultant. I do help mentor a lot of individuals who want to get into cybersecurity, specifically as a SOC analyst. And one of the major problems that I often see is the lack of practical experience. With this 30 day challenge, my goal here is to help those gain confidence in their hands-on skills and obtain the required practical experience. But enough of me talking, let's get right into it. To get started, you wanna head over to draw.io and then you'll be presented with this page right here. If this is your first time using draw.io, don't worry, this is pretty easy to use and I'll go over it very quickly. On the left-hand side, we do have some shapes that we can select from and we can also select mist, or advanced or any other tabs here. However, we are going to mainly focus under the general tab here. At the top, we can actually name our diagram. Currently it is called untitled diagram by default. Now to name it, we can just simply click on it. And then we can type in, let's say 30 day my defer diagram and then click on rename. And now our title is 30 day my D for diagram. On the right hand side, we do have some options for our diagram and style. So for example, we can show the grid or not just by checking this. We can have the page view, have a background color, shadow or sketch. But for now, I'll just uncheck shadow and sketch. And I'll just leave everything as default. See, pretty easy, right? <laughs> First and foremost, let's think about what we're going to be building for this challenge. For this challenge, I am going to be building six servers. So on the top left hand corner, I am going to search for server and hit enter. And now here are all of the icons related to the word server. I'll click on more results and we do have this server right here, a traditional server. So I'll go ahead and click on that and it gets placed right here. So what I'll do is select the server and hold control D to duplicate this. We want to have six servers. So that's three, four, five, and six. Let's go ahead and drag this over here. And I'll be using the cloud provider Vulture to be creating all six servers. On the left-hand side, I'll select this rounded rectangle. And what I'll do is just expand this here. Next on the left, I'll click on the text and then I'll type in Vulture. That way we can just signify that, hey, we are using the Vulture cloud provider. Put this over on the top left-hand corner. And because our servers are behind this, I am going to right click and select to back. Now our servers are all in the front. For our first server, we are going to be spinning up Elastic and Kibana. The next one, this is going to be our Windows server and we'll have RDP enabled. For the next one, we'll say Ubuntu server with SSH enabled. The next we'll have a fleet server and then we'll have an OS ticket server. And finally, we'll have a C2, AKA command and control server. Now, although this server will be built using Vulture, I am actually going to just put this out for now. And I'll be coloring this red by selecting red at the top right hand corner. Now this color is pretty pink, so I'll just select the color and we'll select red. Perfect. If you're not familiar with cloud providers, whenever you spin up a virtual machine within the cloud, you do have the option to configure what is called a VPC, AKA a virtual private cloud. And essentially what a VPC will do is put all of your virtual machines that you created in the cloud in the same private network, if you configure it that way. So let's draw that for our diagram here. I'll go ahead and search up VPC. And we do have one here. So I'll click on the VPC icon and let's expand this just a bit. That way we have more playroom for our diagram. I went ahead and formatted this just a little bit. That way it looks more presentable. And by all means, you can go ahead and copy this as well. The next thing I'll do here is start connecting our servers to each other. Starting with our Windows server with RDP enabled. If you hover this server with your mouse, You'll notice that there are four directional arrows. So what I'll do is click and hold the one on the right, and then I'll connect it over to our fleet server. 
Now, if you're not familiar with what a fleet server is or any of the servers, don't worry because in the future videos, I'll be going over each server. That way, by the end of the videos, you'll know exactly what these servers are. Let's do the same for our Ubuntu server. So I'll go ahead and connect that over to our fleet and I'll double click the arrow and I'll type in managed and then do the same for the Ubuntu managed. And then we'll connect our fleet server to our Elastic and Kibana, just like that. And if you notice, our arrow is pointing directly to our Elastic and Kibana server, but there's nothing for our fleet server. So what I'll do is click on the arrow and on the right hand side where it says none, I'll select this and then click on the first icon underneath none, which is this arrow icon here. What this will do is say, hey, this is a bi-directional arrow. And that is what I'm trying to show here. I will also color this, let's pick orange and I'll change the pattern as well. I'll select the fourth one for now. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then for OS ticket, let's go ahead and connect that over to elastic and I will color this as yellow. Let's do a bi-directional as well, just like that. And then I'll double click this and say alerts slash tickets. And you know what? Let's change the pattern to the same pattern. For the fleet server in Kibana, this is going to say manage agents. And let's connect our Windows server over to our Elastic and Kibana as well. I'll do Ubuntu and connect it like that. Now, I don't like how the arrows are super stiff, like this S shape here. So I'll click on this and click on this waypoint icon and select straight. Now it's a lot neater in my opinion. I'll do the same for the Ubuntu server and let's color this blue. Color that blue and I'll change the pattern to the same pattern as what I used for the fleet server and OS ticket, which is the fourth one here. Nice. What this arrow is going to represent is the logs that are being forwarded from the Windows server into Elastic and Kibana. So I'll say forward logs via agent. Do the same for the Ubuntu as well. The next thing I want to do is specify what my private network range will be. So I'll click on the text icon at the left, drag this over here. And let's say private network. Let's see, what's a good range that we can use? You know what? I'll just say 172.31.0.0. And this will be a slash 24. What this means is that my IP range will be 172.31.0.1 all the way to .254, which is more than enough for this challenge. With a slash 24, that means my subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. And just to make this a little bit more cleaner, on the right hand side, I'll select this left text align. And that just did my subnet mask. So <laughs> I'll highlight all of the text and click on this left text align again. Beautiful. That's looking pretty good. Now I am missing a couple icons here. The first one being the internet gateway. So let's go ahead and search that up. Internet gateway. And we'll select the first one. Let's drag that up here. Minimize this just a bit. Expand this here so we have more room to play with. You can kind of think of this internet gateway as our internet service provider in a sense. And the next thing is our internet. So I'll just type in cloud and this cloud is going to represent our internet. And let's go ahead and connect our internet to our internet gateway and our internet gateway to our VPC, just like so. Perfect. The next thing we want to do is our computer. So search up computer and do we have a fancy one? Ah, let's just use the laptop, I guess. Make this a little bit bigger here and double click this. This will be our SOC analyst laptop. And I'll go ahead and connect this over to the internet and change this line to straight. There you go. Double click that. I'll say connect to elastic slash Kibana via web GUI. And you know what? Let's duplicate our SOC analyst laptop, drag this over and I'll say attacker laptop and color this red. Perfect. This will have Kali Linux installed and our C2 server will be mythic. Nice. 
And I think this is pretty much it, to be honest. Let's see, we have our SOC Analyst laptop to the internet. Now, of course, we can connect this here, just like so. And we can change this to straight, change that to straight. And at the bottom, we have Vulture as our cloud provider, the internet gateway. There's a VPC here. We have Elastic and Kibana, OS Ticket, Ubuntu Server, Fleet Server, and a Windows Server, along with our IP address information. Now, this diagram is not set in stone. At any given time, we can go ahead and update this. But now we have a better understanding of how things are going to flow and what our environment is going to look like. The last thing I want to reiterate here is that your diagram does not need to look pretty. Now I did do a little bit of formatting on my end because I am presenting it to you, but for yourself, you just need to try it and put in the reps to eventually get more comfortable in building logical diagrams. In the beginning, it might feel pretty useless, but trust me, this is a skill that it will be extremely helpful for you in the future. The last thing you want to do here is save it out. So to save it, you want to click on file at the top left corner and select save and then click on save. By following along, not only did you learn how to create a diagram, but you now also have a logical diagram of what the setup is going to look like. And that concludes day one of the 30 day MyD for SOC Analyst Challenge. As a reminder, I'll be doing a giveaway where one lucky winner will win a grand prize of the MyD for SOC Analyst course. And additionally, there will be three one month passes for Try Hack Me. Details are provided in the description. If you are an aspiring SOC analyst, I would highly encourage you to participate to level up your practical skills. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.